Imagine you're 18 years old. You just finished school, you want to travel the world, you want to experience things, you want to see the world, you want to live your life, and maybe you decide to volunteer to work in a developing country in some kind of project. So let's say you end up in Botswana working in an orphanage. Like most people working in the development aid field and volunteers, you will be confronted with a topic like HIV AIDS. And for most Europeans, you probably will not have the experience of li living in a country like in Botswana, where you have 25% prevalence of AIDS or HIV. That means every fourth person in this room would be infected. Can you even imagine what that means? So this is something you will be confronted with, and how will you do deal with that? Think about it. Big projects you're working in, they lose employees all the time. Funerals interfere with your working schedules, families, your friends. You meet people today, they're gone tomorrow. And can we even imagine how that feels? Have you ever been to a medical ex examination for a fatal disease? And can you imagine living in that fear all the time? So how would that be if you go into that situation and you could have a feeling about that before you encounter it? And how would it be to get just a glimpse of understanding of how the other people would feel? So this is what we did in a LARP for um, volunteers and development aid workers, um, presenting them with the opportunity to, to face these situations before they encounter them in real life. So from a, from a LARP creator point of view, we use very simple tools to create a situation and characters uh, for these participants. So they could confront this on a very personal level. They were sitting in the waiting room of a hospital in a developing country. They were waiting for the test results, or maybe they were waiting to make a test. Maybe some of their relatives had made a test and they wanted to find out if their child was infected or not. So all these different characters that they played, coming from different social, economic and cultural backgrounds, some were expatriates living in the country, some tourists, some citizens. Some were poor, some were rich. And all of them had just one thing in common. They somehow had to deal with AIDS, HIV. Those participants had no prior lab experience. So we gave them an introduction to this game. We gave them some room to exercise in drama workshops. And then just after one hour of playing, they were simply blown away. Because this immersing into a character gave them a chance to feel how others might feel, gave them a chance to explore emotions instead of rationalization of facts and figures. If you're working in the development field, you will encounter difficult situations <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. It's poverty, <coughs> hunger, violence, there is racism, there is gender inequality, the list goes on. And usually when you, when you work in that field, you will have a preparation training for that. You go to a specialized training facility, probably in Europe, and you will learn about how it will be to work in this field and how to deal with these situations. And you learn this by using a variety of tools. So there's full front representations like what we're doing here. You have workshops, you have seminar role plays, you have simulation games. But all of these um, are have one thing in common, there's a huge difference to LARP. In LARP, you don't play yourself. In all of these role plays you do in, in seminars and in workshops, you play yourself and you try to optimize your behavior in a certain, to a certain degree. In LARP, you don't. So, funnily enough, by not playing yourself, people were able to let themselves go a lot more and not pretend as much. They didn't have to optimize. They didn't, it wasn't about good performance. We heard before, it, it's about playing to lose. So you, they could risk and even embrace failure. And that gave them the opportunity to actually understand 
just a bit of how others feel in that si situation and how they might feel in that situation as well. Traditional trains also give you no empathy for, for uh, that how the others might feel. And they give you no understanding of the privilege you will be in, you will have when you live in such a country. So even though you might have to deal with things you would deem un unexpected in, in, in Europe or in, in the US, like water shortages, power cuts, even limited access to, to medical treatment or, or uh, supplies. Even though you have these limitations, you still are privileged compared to most people living in those countries. And then what it can never prepare you for is for the sometimes just overwhelming positive feedback you receive when you meet people and they're just happy to see you. And knowing at the same time if those people would come to your country, how would they be welcomed? So they say that uh, experience is a cruel teacher but most will learn by no other. Um, I believe that with LARP as a method in, in trainings, um, we have a tool at hand which is so powerful to give you that understanding before you encounter the difficult situations and to actually help you try out yourself and use that um, to learn, to get experience before, you, uh, b before you're really there or maybe you are. So to finish up with LARP as a tool, you don't have just to dive in, in the deep end anymore. Thank you.